Coming off a slither game almost identical in outline to the one highlighted in my look ma, no mods video, at 32k in 4 hours, 16 minutes. But different in that this time around I gave myself permission to get a little crazy after I reached first place. I sniffed for glorious trap attempts that weren't completely safe, tried to squeeze snakes that were really too small to coil, and ate every last dot by the wall. The game has been converted into my longest video ever, it's long because it's awesome. It's also long because my conventions have expanded to include every last kill I see being made by other snake worms, since kill hungry viewers don't get sated from watching my kills alone. It's a beautiful day for Cosmic League Baseball once around the pitching rotations. Such that every debuter from last time around will be pitching their second game. A fully programmed Diamond's Hearts rivalry league would mix rotations up by seeding pitchers according to their win-loss records. And margins of victory and defeat, but as it stands the same pitchers duel against each other over and over again. Harkens me back to my favorite league ever, the Old East-West rivalry league when each team had only one pitcher. With six pitchers per side nowadays, it's almost as if we have six East-West leagues going at the same time. Diamond Dixie conclusion pitched a 5-0 shutout in the opener, and now has extended her scoreless streak to 10 innings while perfect so far in this one. Push it to 18 and we're talking the next Fernando Mania. You know, you can actually argue for Lucky Lotto Lad winning this round on tiebreaker, his overall distances allowed added to only 3 as opposed to Dixie's 7, the question is how to interpret the distance angle 0-0 of Believe in Miracles. On the one hand, pitchers distance zeros are far superior to distance 1s and everything else, but angle zeros are a hit zone in all cases except when paired with a distance zero, Lotto Lad kind of lucked out that he didn't give up a hit to Miracles. A hit allowed after two innings and Dixie is still on pace to top her seven hit shutout. But the lone K after two has her still behind the pace to match her eight strikeouts from last time. Lotto Lat almost identical to conclusion again. Another edge in overall distances, though that angle three is a hit zone except when paired with a zero, so Lucky looks to have lucked out again. Just to look at a triple play square being landed makes my heart skip a beat. Never mind that we were miles from a triple play situation, two thirds the way to Dixie Mania. 17 plays from the start of the game had been decided below distance for where the outfield would begin. And here the Hearts lucky lotto lad went four or above in three of the next four, including a maximum niner. Though it's almost incidental to how the inning transpired at the level of actual outcomes. The Diamonds gave scoring a scare by loading the bases on two hits and the game's first walk, but Longface was put out to end the inning. The pitchers were out of sync last inning, but if you compare this past bottom with top instead of top with bottom they look eerily similar again. 3 of 4 to at least distance 5 against Dixie conclusion, including likewise 1 of home run potential, and she too gave up her first walk. Double play balls hypothetically landed back to back, though the pristineness was hypothetically marred by a play of home run potential. 14th consecutive shutout inning from the start of Dixie's career, and all 9 hits allowed have been singles. Walks in consecutive innings raises her career total to 3. 5 of 6 hypothetical double plays for Lucky Lotto Lad, this string of 3 on its own is the first such string I have witnessed. Lucky has a 3 hit shutout of his own going but something has got to give, somebody needs to score. Dixie's 4 hitter after 6 had been a 2 hitter through 5 and 2 thirds, Three hits allowed these past two innings is ordinary stuff, from DPing the side to striking out the side, after surrendering a lead off double, this game's first extra base hit, to the diamonds show me the money. Trade those K's in for plain outs and they would have leaked in a run. Pretty sure the three straight strikeouts is a leak first. I'm made to cross reference to my flats rounds tabletop demonstration leak that lasted as many games as I've uncovered so far in this league where there were two cases of players striking out the side, one by Carrots, and one by Storm's Ransom. The Hearts' lucky Lotto Lad joins the elite group after failing to strike out anyone through the first five innings of play. Eight ninths to Mania, except what happens if we are still scoreless through regulation. 
Success in one outing shouldn't relate that strongly to success in one's next at such an early stage in a cosmic baseball league. When the organic player cards that develop athletic personalities are still largely unformed, during a test phase leading up to this league we had a nameless pitcher follow up a one-hitter with allowing 13 runs. Breakout inning for the Diamonds And that much closer to Dixie conclusion bobbleheads, t-shirts, and mugs while she is resting her arm no less. It all goes to hell for Lotto Lat after his fourth consecutive strikeout put him in a league of his own. Five hits surrendered in his next one-third of an inning after having allowed only four hits through his first six frames with the biggest bop belonging to Pippi Longstocking. Pippi is the one I watch closest. Curious what a batter looks like after they have posted consecutive 3 for 3s at one point. Cancel the bobbleheads. Dixie stands to lose. Hearts take the lead 3-2 after kicking off the 8th with back-to-back -back walks. Followed by fireball reaching base on an infield hit. That 4 of 6 run of distance zeros was naturally Dixie's best but the Hearts batted 500 on those dribblers by pairing them with angle 6. Dixie Conclusion had started her career with 16 straight scoreless innings, and now it's looking like she will fall to a record of 1-1. One and one. Not so fast. Diamonds score twice and retake the lead 4-3. These two pitchers keep playing up or down to the other pitcher's level, shake my head. Bailey's Irish Cream wraps a triple for the game's longest hit, and Pippi Longstocking now has a two-double game. Matching her eighth in the order counterpart crouching Tiger's feet from the previous day, and they've come on two straight trips to the plate. Do you see that staggered six and seven in the spacious, who scored column? The six tells us that sixth hitter far away Kingdom scored on Bailey's triple. And quirkily not only that Bailey scored on Pippi's double, but also that 7th in the order Bailey surpassed home plate and reached an imaginary 5th base on the play. Bailey had been on 3rd base, and the program insists that he advanced 2 bases on the double. Look out! 3-run homer. 2nd Earl Weaver Dinger that this league has ever had. And the first hit Dixie conclusion has allowed in her career that was not a single. Fireball makes it to 4th base on his own play, and Dappelganger makes it to 7th base, not to be outdone. The ball game is unrecognizable from when it was a scoreless tie through the top of the seventh inning. Both offenses woke the hell up after the seventh inning stretch. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to the tenth. Five straight half innings scoring multiple runs after goose eggs through the first thirteen. The kind of anomaly that I have historically lived for, and which might send a fellow running to baseballreference.com or some damn place in search of the major league record in this category that no one could possibly have dreamt up without seeing an instance like this shove itself in front of one's face the diamonds loaded them up before an out was made and from there it was merely a matter of leaking in runs on outs as is the cosmic way the 12 total runs after nine is the second most runs we've had seven games into existence and second only to our previous game which no one could have predicted before we began to sing take me out to the ball game, what? A perfect inning? Let's take this into the 40th, which can happen in simulations where nobody ever gets tired, including the fans who can watch these games get spit out at an accelerated pace. Dixie's 2Ks in a 1-2-3 is the most this ball game has had, and this is our first adventure that has made it to extra innings. Lucky Lotto Lad plays to Dixie's level again, Broadly speaking, bottom line is a goose egg matching a goose egg, and we're going to the 11th inning. With a major assist from this ball game's first actual double play, making nothing but trouble goat of the moment. The yard holds Casanova's clout and it's still a 6-6 tie. Is Lucky going to blow it? No a resounding no. Perfect inning capped with a K. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jack. We are heading to the 12th. Bartholomew two bagger wasted, a case of too little too late. Conclusion has given buckets of singles. Along with that three run shot off the bat of fireball, but this here is the first double in a 21 inning career. But, a double is hit, and nothing is shown beneath it. Oh, that means the game's over. And the diamonds have won 7-6 in an exhausting but fulfilling 12 innings. The diamond duo tandem of Bailey's and Pippi wrapped extra base hits back to back for the second time this ball game, 
and Pippi Longstocking made her unconscious their double count in the most emphatic way, sending all of Diamond's nation home happy. I never realized quite how pretty that third stanza was, with the two run innings all belonging to the Diamonds while the three runners went with the Hearts, who had gotten a late start. Perhaps coolest of all, was learning that losing lucky Lotto Lad had no strikeouts apart from his four consecutive Ks through the first regulation nine innings. Bailey's Irish Cream became our first player to score three runs in one game, and he matched his singular feat, now plural, by tripling and doubling in consecutive games. Which is right up there with the two straight games of batting a thousand once achieved by the player below him in the Diamonds lineup, namely Pippi Longstocking. We know about Pippi's three doubles. But did you know there was also a hidden fourth hit that gave Pippi a tie of the single game record with teammate Sweet as Sugar? Who by the way has at least three hits in each of the past three games. Fireball in defeat set the runs plus Ribby's record. Having done something right besides hit a three run homer, which is more than his heart's teammate Dapplganger could say on the day of his own three run dinger. Dapplganger increased the at bat record for a second consecutive game, as Marathon follows Slugfest, being a lead off hitter who apparently rarely walks. Dapplganger made the last out in all five at bats when he wasn't leading off an inning. About that bizarre drop off from seven at bats to Fortune Cookies game, low of three, this is what happens when you combine tying the walk record with being at the slot in the order where plate appearances drop to six per batter. Good for Dixie conclusion in running her record versus Lotto Lat and the Hearts to 2 and 0. Though the 7 6 ratio of bases on balls over strikeouts is a troublesome development, coming from a pitcher who whipped eight against a lone walk during her shutout performance. The Diamonds lead the Hearts five games to 2 in the all time series. Check out the link, will you? to the Cosmic League Baseball rulebook that appears in the description, and take my simulation, please. If you are a programmer, in case my brother gets tired of working on this.